Hey, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Professor. Hey, good morning, Angelica. Morning, morning Jeremiah. How are you, Naomi? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Good, good, very good. Thank you. How are you, Noel? Hello. I'm good. I'm yeah, good. Good, good, good. You are, your voice sounds quite lively. Huh? Um, all right, we have four people uh, in the Collaborate. Let me just check how many we have in, the, uh, in today's forum. We have five people uh, in today's forum, right? So we're still waiting for Maricel to uh, join us. Uh, and hopefully, hopefully, you know, shortly, you know, oh, Maricel is with us now. Okay, how are you, Maricel? I'm good, how are you? Good, good. Um, all right, so the numbers match, you know, five people in both, uh, in both uh, sessions. I mean, this one is actually for your signing sheet. Um, so um, uh, let's let me continue right uh, uh, from where we left off last time. So actually, we were um, yeah in our last class. We were talking about the uh, 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 log, right? Logarithm. Ah, it's hard to write. <laughs> and uh, uh, we have. Uh, I, 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 not that. Uh, And the reason we need log, uh, the reason we need to use log is because, um, because of its properties. There are, uh, first of all, uh, it becomes it's getting more and more difficult to write with this thing. I'll have to go back to the mouse. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because of, you know, uh, first of all, um, uh, we understand that um, um, we, we can express a large number, like, you know, uh, even 1 billion, right? Uh, 1 billion has nine zeros, right? So, uh, log of 1 billion to base 10, or base 10 log of 1 billion is, uh, we know it is, We can write it as log of 10 to the 12th, or oh, ninth, I'm sorry, ninth. Right? And uh, this will simply be, uh, this will simply become uh, uh, nine. It will become nine because uh, one of the properties of log logarithm is uh, the exponent can be uh, turned into coefficient, like as if you're writing it like this. Okay.
And in other words, you can, right? Uh, you can bring down the exponent like, uh, 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 you know, multiplicative uh, from, you know, you can turn the power function into a multiplicative function. In other words, what I'm talking about is, um, if z equals x, x raised to y, but if you take the log on both sides, you'll have, you know, whatever you do, because it's an equation, whatever you do to one side, you must do the same thing to the other side too. And if you do that, um, it, uh, it will be first, you know, of course, uh, law of x to y, but this will become y times log of x. Okay. This property will serve us, you know, um, a very, it will serve us very well. It will be very helpful to us because without this, in other words, you know, uh, you are turning, um, you are turning a uh, power function or turning a power function into a multiplicative function, right? Or turning this power function into a multi multiplicative function, right? Then think about it. Um, this is like you know. Uh, previously, it was z equals x uh, x raised to y. Now it is like uh, now it is you know like z equals x times y. Now it is like z equals uh, x times y. I mean you know uh, rather rather than z, let's call it uh, by something else. That's like you know. Uh, uh, that power function turned into multiplicative function. Now it turned into uh, A equals B times C. And then uh, think about it. Our unknown is this, right? This is our unknown. Uh, yeah. That's our unknown. We want to find that. So basically, you know, um, once it is into a, a multiplicative function, it's easy. You can just simply, you know, uh, then B will be A over C, right? This way we can find uh, the exponent. And remember, um, and this is a very useful function for us. Right, and of course, last time I um, uh, uh, another reason for I mean uh, uh, initially the uh, 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 the usefulness of log is uh, the ability to express huge numbers in a uh, condensed uh, way, right? So it becomes more manageable. In other words, you know, uh, I gave you an example of, you know, um, the distance between the Earth and the nearest galaxy. And uh, if the uh, distance between Earth and our neighbor, you know, uh, nearest neighbor, which would be like, you know, tens of, you know, uh, hundreds of light years or tens of, you know, like maybe not hundreds, but, you know, tens of light years away, which would be like, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, truly uh, billions or trillions of miles, trillions of miles. 
but you know uh, that and which can be uh, like which can be like uh, a million times the distance between you know uh, or billion times the distance between sun and uh, the earth but you know which is not possible I mean it may be possible it's not easy to uh, uh, put it on a uh, limited space and if you're drawing that distance on a uh, paper it will take uh, a huge paper right to put that you know uh, even by a very large uh, small scale even by, by very you know a uh, small scale uh, but still all that can be uh, easily managed if you use log scale because uh, in log scale two is hundred times three is thousand times four is ten thousand times right uh, six is one million times and so on right on a logarithmic scale uh, I don't want to go over this again if you uh, if you're wondering what I'm talking about uh, you know go back you know go back to our previous lecture recording I it's always posted there in our uh, topics folder it's only a matter of you know um, 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 it's only a matter of, you know, uh, spending your time to watch it, right? Uh, on top of the main lecture video, uh, you know, I provide um, the uh, live session recording, live recording of every, you know, live session. Uh, I mean, you know, uh, past. Uh, sessions, you know, um, so it's only, you know, um, uh, if you don't do that, you only have yourselves to blame, right, because, you know, uh, uh, it's only a matter of, you know, uh, just uh, uh, clicking, right, it's only a matter of, it's just a click away, so, um, so this is, you know, basically why uh, we have to use log. And then the second, uh, then the third, uh, okay, then the second question. The second question is, um, it's not just, you know, uh, 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 this is an example of base 10 log, right, base 10. base 10 law, right? And if, if you are using a uh, base 10 law to base 10, it's called common law, right? It's called common law. And Common log, right? Common log uh, has 10 as the base, and it's easy to uh, it's easy to stand. Uh, but then the the choice is limited. Um, it has to be the numbers that are powers of 10, like you know, hundred thousand, ten thousand, right? Hundred thousand million, you know, uh, ten million then you can easily visualize what that will be. Uh, as I said, you know, uh, 1 billion, it will be 9, right? 1 billion will be 9. Uh, and 1 million will be, 1 million will be, um, ah, Jesus. Uh, 1 million will be 6. Okay, uh, give, uh, this is the chair, so let me take the call. Yeah, hi. Uh, I'm in the middle of the class. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'll call you after class then. Uh, it's one hour class, so I'll be calling you at around 12. Uh, all right, you're welcome. Bye-bye.
All righty. And then uh, uh, where was I? Uh, the second type of, um, okay, uh, common log uh, is the log with base 10, log to base 10. And of course, um, although although uh, it will be easier, um, I mean, it's easy to mentally calculate uh, what it will be meant, uh, easy to uh, calculate mentally if the uh, uh, numbers are the powers of 10, right? But it doesn't mean you cannot take common log of numbers that are like, you know, uh, uh, 173 or 5.72. Um, you can take common log of numbers like that, but it's kind of, uh, uh, you'll have to use the calculator or computer Right, because it's um, but it's not easily you know um, uh, it's not easily uh, uh, it's not amenable to uh, just mental uh, calculation, uh, mental math. Um, so um, then, what kind of log do we have to? Uh, uh, what kind of base do we need? Uh, to use. The second one is binary. Binary log. Ah, it takes too much time to write. So uh, uh, let me just use, you know, uh, it's all there. It's just a matter of, you know, uh, a few um, matter of studying, literally. Right. So <clears throat> then the binary log is the log with, you know, to the base two, right? Uh, base two log of. So think about it. If it is, if it is, um, uh, if the number is something that's power of two, right? Like four, eight, 16. 32, it will be easy, you know, as mental, you know, you can do easily the mental math and, you know, uh, um, eight is two to the third, uh, third power. So it's three, um, log of, uh, base to log of 16 is two to the fourth. So it will be four and so on. Right. Uh, but again, other numbers, it's not, it's not impossible. You can take, you know, binary log of other numbers as well. Uh, but the th problem is uh, it's not easy to mentally, you know, calculate. Um, the third one is more difficult one. I mean, it's, you cannot do the mental calculation of that. The third one is called natural law. And the natural log uh, uses the Euler's number, the Euler's number as the base. Natural log uses Euler's number as the base. So, uh, and it can take any number. It can take lo log of any number. And most important is uh, any irrational number, any continuous, continuously irrational number or irrationally continuous. What is irrational number? Irrational number is a number like, you know, pi. Think about it. Pi, we all know it's 3.14 and it, it goes on. It keeps going on. It doesn't stop, right? It's 3.14 something, 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 something. And um, it goes on forever. Hence it's called irrational, meaning, you know, uh, there can be no ratio right? There can be no uh, uh, definite ratio, right? Uh, 
of course, even you know, uh, 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 three over four, this will be irrational. Three over four because it's going to be sixty-six point six 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 six. It keeps on going. You just round it up to a point six seven, right? But you know, if you if you, but then you know, uh, at least at least three over four uh, will be repeating, right? Six will be repeating, you know. Um, so you can have a, a ratio, for example. You know, let's just you know, three over four. Oh, I'm sorry, that was not three over four. That's the zero points. What I was what I was trying to say was uh, two over three, right? Two over three, right? Go, it keeps on going. Six. You might say, oh, it, it stops at you know. Uh, somewhere no no it's just rounded it's just rounded but it will go on forever but it's you know it's, it's going to be like 0 0.66666 infinitely six right so you have to round this somewhere you can round this somewhere like this um uh but you know uh, we know uh, uh uh something like pi this pi is here right it keeps on, you know, it's not repeating. There is no, you know, again, uh, what is Euler's number then? Uh, there is Euler's number, right? Uh, just like pi, uh, it keeps on going. So what is Euler's number? Um, so um, uh, natural log is using Euler's number as the base. It can be also written as ln of x. Of course, ln, it's, what else can it be? Natural law, natural, right? N would be, N would stand for natural. And then, um, so why is this, um, uh, so here's the thing. Um, so why do we need to use an you know, natural law? You know, I'm gonna get to that later. But here, um, uh, before we uh, go to that, let me quickly, you know, get back to uh, uh, think about it. Um, this property, right? This property. I I said this property is what we need right this this is property is what we need so now uh think about it let me put it uh side by side so it will be easier to see um so we have uh, basically you know starting from the uh very basic equation, right? Um, uh, always the starting point is, you know, uh, compounding, right? Uh, formula. So future value, uh, yeah. it's principal times one plus R Come on. Raise to N. And then this is our unknown, right? Um, and there is no way we can isolate this uh, right away. So we'll do what, what, whatever we can. We'll do whatever we can. And so first, We'll have to isolate the uh, the term that includes or contains that n. So we divide both sides by p, and then we will have only one plus r raised to n on the right in the right hand side. Now, isn't this now? Doesn't this look like z equals? Okay.
now isn't it z equals x to the y x raised to the y format yes now <clears throat> Then our question is, right, since this is, you know, uh, like z equals x times, uh, I, not that. how do we then solve for y? Well, I showed you how. We'll have to take the log on both sides, right? So then, you know, that means we'll need to take log of the left hand side which is this and then we take the log of the uh, right hand side right hand side is 1 plus r raised to n then the right hand side becomes n times log of 1 plus r now we can solve for n. Isn't that right? We can easily solve for n. Because then, you know, it's a multiplicative function now. Then, ah. then n is uh, log of the left hand side which is f over p and the right hand side which is log of one plus r okay that way that way we can um uh eventually we can nail this n okay um then our next question is um so to do this, um, do we take common log or binary log? No, the answer is natural log. Why natural log? So now, uh, uh, I said natural log was discovered by uh, a German mathematician named Euler. Okay, it's not Euler, right? Uh, it's pronounced Euler. It's German name, you know. I mean, you don't have to uh, uh, anglicize everything. Um, and there are two German mathematicians, you know, uh, that has made a great impact to the mathematics um, uh, in, you know, um, uh, they are all, they lived around, you know, like 17th century. 17th or 18th century. One is Euler and the other one is Gauss. Okay. Um, it's not Gauss, it's Gauss. And I find it so uh, um, um, incomprehensible. I mean, why do people... Some some people, especially you know, um, um, like people in the mid Midwest and the South, Midwest and the South. In other words, you know, heartland uh, uh, America you know, or uh, typical um, what they consider to be typical American, like Homer Simpson or. Um, what was his name? The, uh, the, the, I forgot. Um, there was this cartoon, you know. Or, uh, uh, well, um, 
and the typical American, uh, when we say typical American, you know, it's hard. Uh, what is a typical American? I, I would say, you know, um, uh, it's sad to say, you know, uh, um, I, I don't know. I, you know, I cannot generalize you know, everything, but the typical American, um, uh, represented by, you know, like, you know, uh, uh, white male um, with no college education or just, just a little college education, some college education and Republican and, you know, Trump supporters and, you know, um, and somehow, you know, uh, anti-vaxxers and, you know, uh, anti, uh, and, uh, uh, conspiracy, uh, theory believers. And uh, they somehow have a hard time adapting or adopting foreign pronunciation. I mean, it's, if it is in German, if it is Euler, it's not difficult to pronounce it. They can, they can pronounce Euler, but they, they stubbornly, right, stubbornly uh, pronounce it as Euler. And Gauss, they can pronounce it as Gauss. Is it... Such a, uh, a difficult challenge. I mean, is it so challenging to pronounce it as Gauss? They they stubbornly pronounce it as Gauss. That's that's you know just uh, pathetic, implorable, deplorable. But anyway, uh, <laughs> that's not the point. Um, uh, because you know uh, uh, the in the ancient world the math. The mathematicians were all, you know, either Greek or Egyptian <laughs> around Alexandria, right, area. I mean, you know, in the era of, you know, uh, uh, a Greek and, you know, Egyptian civilization. Now, in modern math, you know, uh, modern means, you know, not 20th century. I mean, even going to uh, uh, right after right Renaissance, Renaissance period, right, Renaissance era, um, and that should be pronounced Renaissance. Um, German mathematicians, you know, uh, both Gauss and Euler, they lived around like 17 something, 1700s. Um, and they made a very big impact. Um, Euler, especially, um, he was the one who discovered, he was the one who discovered, uh, Euler's number, or it's also called exponential uh, function. And what is E? Um, actually, in number, it is like pi. It's 2.718 something something. It goes on forever. It's a rational number. OK. It's a rational number. Uh, but how did they arrive at this number? Uh, the idea is like this. Um, so we all know, we all, we all understand. Uh, now, uh, it, the compounding doesn't have to be only annual. There are, you know, uh, we know what compounding frequency is, right? Um, and compounding frequency is one, it can be one, two, four, right? And then 12. I mean, you know, it's annual, semi annual, or every six months, quarterly, monthly, and daily, right? Of course, you know, uh, you can have 52. 52 is what? Weekly. But, you know, they don't use it, they don't use weekly, right? Uh, and then uh, 365, which is daily compounding. Three sixty-five, and then I told you it can be by the hour. Theoretically, I mean, for all practical reasons, this is the maximum, right? 
This is the uh, maximum compounding frequency for all practical purposes. But uh, theoretically, it can be by the hour, by the minute, uh, by the uh, second, right? And it can uh, be even by nanosecond. You know what nanosecond is? Nanosecond is, you know, uh, uh, nano means nine. So uh, you, mean, you might think nine second? No. Nanosecond means, you know, uh, um, oh yeah, this thing, this thing isn't working. Oh. Ten to the negative ninth. Nano means nine, so ten to the negative ninth. What does no? You all know this is. reciprocal uh, 1 over 10 to the ninth, right? So what does that mean? One billionth of a second, one billionth of a second. You can even have one trillionth of a second. But as you increase the uh, compounding frequency, right? Ultimately, um, the highest compounding frequency is infinity. Isn't that right? Infinite, uh, in other words, infinite compounding during a year. Infinite. Then it will be like, you know, um, uh, now let's think about it. So we know um, this is how we make adjustment, right? APR over M, right? APR is the uh, annual rate. <clears throat> and during a year, think about it, during a year, um, compounding happens in times, right? So APR must be adjusted by M, right? It must be divided by M. But what if, you know, uh, then think about it. If M goes to infinity, right? Also, that means this goes to the infinity. Then this whole thing will become one, uh, one plus. Uh, and let's assume that APR is 100%. 100% is 1, right? And we can, because it is 1, we can replace it with anything later. We can replace it with anything later. Let's say... Right? 1. Uh, that means if APR is 100%, that means you, one year later, I mean, every year you will double the money, right? You will double the money. But then um, if compounding frequency goes to infinity, right? Uh, we, so infinite compounding, right? Infinite compounding. Then our question is, what is, first of all, what is this number going to be? Right? Anyone? Anyone? I mean, this is just logic. I mean, did, right? No calculation. But just logically, you can easily, um, you can easily come to an answer. Anyone? Hmm? Use your logic. I mean, if you divide anything, one or anything, regardless of what, any finite number, but one, uh, you know, uh, if you divide one by infinity, what's it going to be? Anyone? Hmm? Is there anyone who can answer that? 
If you divide one by infinity, what's it going to be? Hmm? Isn't it still infinity? No, 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 no. It's not infinity. Why? Look, first of all, uh, you didn't use your logic. Huh? Infinity means infinitely large number. Infinitely large number. You're dividing something. Or you're dividing something. And more specifically, one by infinitely large number. Then how can it be infinity? Infinity means infinitely large number. You're dividing something by an infinitely large number. Huh? How can it be a how can it be an infinitely large number? Think logically. I mean, even if you divide one by ten, Would it, it be gets zero? Small. Oh, who said that? Who said that? Noel. Noel. Okay. Did you say zero? Yeah, zero. Just zero or close to zero? Like just zero. No, no, no. It will be close to zero. In other words, it won't be exactly zero. Um, only the only way you can get zero is when you divide zero by something. Then it will be zero. But you are dividing. Oh. Uh, yeah, it will be close, right? It will it will be approaching zero, right? Um, it will be approaching zero, but it will be uh, in mathematical in mathematical speak, it is called you know asymptotically zero. Asymptotically, it will be approaching uh, uh, zero, uh, but not quite zero. Uh, but you know, um, yeah, Noel, you get. But you know, that's a logical thinking, right? It's a logical thinking. So Noel, uh, uh, you got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So would there be like a specific sign that you would put next to the answer zero? Or like, would it just be like zero and then you write? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Look, 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 uh, I'm going to I'm going to write that right now. Uh, oh, yeah, Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. This double wave, double wave sign, that's or it's double wave or sometimes, you know, um, uh, a double wave or t uh, dots above and below equal sign. That means approximately equal to, right? Approximately equal to, right? Okay, that means, you know, it's not quite zero, but so, yeah. Is close to zero, right? But well, that's the logical thinking, right? Uh, and then, so it's the whole thing in the parenthesis, the whole thing in the parenthesis is slightly greater than zero. The whole thing in the parenthesis is slightly greater than zero. So it's like zero point, uh, I mean, slightly greater than once. The whole thing in the parenthesis, right? The whole thing in the parenthesis is slightly greater than one. So it's like 1.0000000000, infinitely zero, infinitely zero, infinitely zero, and one. Right? Makes sense? So then if you raise that, if you raise a number like that, something slightly greater than uh, one, if you raise it to infinity, what's it going to be? You're raising something slightly greater than 1 to infinity, what's it going to be? Hmm? So the problem will be easy. The thing will, it will be very easy if it is, if this thing is completely zero, right? If this thing is completely zero, just zero, then the problem will be easy. It's just one. It will be just one. And if you raise one to infinity, it will still be one. No matter what, it will still be one, right? One squared, one, one squared is one. Uh, one cubed is one. One times, one times, one times, one times, one times, infinitely times one, still one. But this is not one. It's slightly greater than one. And something like that, if you raise something slightly greater than one to infinity, what's it going to be? 
Hmm? Now, some students might say it will be infinity. Uh, no, it, it's not infinity. Um, I mean, if it is, even if, if it is something like 1.05, if it is something like 1.05, it will be infinity. If you raise something like 1.05 to infinity, it will be infinity. But anything, but then this is just insignificantly greater than one, and you raise it to infinity, it's going to be, um, so I'm going to use the, uh, uh, it's going to come to something like 2.718, 2.7, and it's just rounded. It's just, so look, that's why I use this, you know, uh, roughly equivalent to, right? Uh, but how does, how does, you know, why, why, how did it come to that? Let me show you here. Okay, here's what I, um, so under, uh, you have, you, uh, you put $1,000 in the bank, you put $1,000 in the bank, 6% uh, interest rate, five years, right? So it's, you know, a quite obvious scenario. We, you know, and then here, compounding frequency is one. And I increase the compounding frequency by, you know, uh, gradually. Uh, and uh, that's, that's, you know, um, uh, uh, that's when the interest rate is six. Here, I assumed, you know, interest, 100% uh, interest rate here. In this case, I assumed 100% interest rate. I actually, I should probably move this to the, uh, totally different thing. Now let's see what it's going to be. Um, when M is, you know, uh, okay, so you need to see the M2, right? Uh, okay, so if M is one, right? Uh, compounding frequency is one, one plus one over m raised to m is two, right? Because and then if you raise it to um, uh, 365 uh, daily compounding, uh, that 100% uh, APR uh, compounded 360 times a year, uh, the compounding factor. In other words, this will be uh, 2.714. But as you raise it to uh, something like 100,000, it comes to two point, as you raise it, you know, look, from 1,000, 10,000, 10 times, 100 times, 1,000 times, right? 10,000 times, 100,000 times. You increase the uh, compounding frequency uh, uh, by 100,000 times, but the difference won't be, difference won't be uh, that much. The number, these numbers all up, approach, right, a certain limit. In other words, just because you raise the compounding frequency to infinity, it doesn't necessarily become uh, huge. It just approaches a certain number, which is you know, which center, which centers around 2.71828 something something. Right, so that's called Euler's number, and the Euler's number, uh, we're out of time, uh, is, uh, think about it, um, because it's a number based on, uh, because it's the number based on uh, uh, a number that is just slightly greater than one, just slightly greater than one, uh, insignificantly greater than one, um, it can be used as the base of log for any number. Uh, more importantly, uh, uh, 
even any irrational number, right? Uh, uh, because uh, it's, it's just slightly greater than one. So it can be the base of log for any even uh, uh, and you know uh, uh, continue uh, if if think about it if you break up if you split one ear into infinite small fragments infinite small fragments then the uh, the time is almost fluid time you know uh, think about it you can you you segment you cut up one ear into infinitely small fragments and all those fragments uh you, if you connect those fragments it will be like you know uh smooth co uh, continuity of time continuity right uh time can be uh, time is actually continuous we just perceive time as discrete unit like you know uh, hours minutes uh days you know seconds they are all discrete units but you know actually between one second then to the next it's not like, you know, uh, from one second to the next, it, time just doesn't just, you know, uh, uh, skip from one second to the next. I mean, it's continuous, right? It's continuous. So uh, when we are dealing with, you know, uh, uh, a con continuity of time and uh, when we are dealing with um, uh, uh, irrational number, right? The base, uh, I mean, uh, it's only uh, it's only uh, fitting and proper to use uh, Euler's number as the base. Okay, so uh, we're out of time. So that's what you know uh, uh, what the Euler's number is about. And uh, if you take if you use the Euler's number as the base of the law, that's called natural law. And then you know by using natural law. Uh, uh, we can uh, we can handle the uh, question. We can handle the problem of uh, yeah. We can solve it like this, but we don't know what we can solve uh, for n like this. But the problem is, question is, what is this number? Huh? How do we know? I mean, um, is there any guarantee that these numbers are like multiples of ten, or powers of ten, or you know, powers of two? No, it could be any number. So then if it is, it can be any number, then it's only, you know, right to use, you know, uh, it's only correct to use natural law, uh, uh, natural law, right? All right, so uh, that's it for today. Uh, any questions so far? Any questions? Any questions? All right, if there are no, uh, yeah, Noel, you have oh, a question? Well, I don't have any questions. I was going to say that I don't have any questions. Okay. All righty. All righty. All right. So uh, uh, the time is up. I will. Uh, I have a. You know. I will see you guys uh, next Tuesday. Have a great afternoon. Um, I will uh, stop sharing and stop recording and sign out. Have a good weekend. All right. You too. You too. Have a good weekend, everyone. Okay.